Hello, and welcome to our Monday midday live stream. I am Laura Messer. I am the pastoral resident here at First Presbyterian Church in Cuero, Texas. And we are gathering together virtually every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon and 8 p.m. Our midday time is for some scripture reading and uh, reflection and a little bit of prayer, perhaps. Um, I often read poems to you all at midday. So we are here today with some scripture. Um, I have chosen one of my favorite pieces of scripture for today. Um, and I'm going to pull it up here. I'm reading from my phone today rather than my large array of books that I usually have. Uh, so the scripture that I've chosen for today is from John chapter 11, and it's verses 1 through 45. So it's another fairly long reading, um, but it's a familiar story, I think, for many of us. It is the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and start reading that. If you'd like to follow along again, it's John 11, 1 through 45. Um, actually, I think it goes to 46. Um, and I'm reading here from the Common English Bible version, and I apologize, my cat is being crazy behind me. Hopefully she'll calm down. All right, let's read. A certain man, Lazarus, was ill. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. This was the Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Lord, the one whom you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, Jesus said, the illness isn't fatal. It's for the glory of God, so that God's Son can be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and Lazarus. When he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was. After two days, he said to his disciples, let's return to Judea again. The disciples replied, Rabbi, the Jewish, the Jewish opposition wants to stone you, but you want to go back? Jesus answered, aren't there 12 hours in the day? Whoever walks in the day doesn't stumble because they see the light of the world. But whoever walks in the night does stumble because the light isn't in them. He continued, our friend Lazarus is sleeping, but I'm going in order to wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he's sleeping, he'll get well. They thought Jesus meant that Lazarus was in a deep sleep, but Jesus had spoken about Lazarus' death. Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. For your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there so that you can believe. Let's go to him. Then Thomas, the one called Didymus, said to the other disciples, let us go too so that we may die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was a little less than two miles from Jerusalem. Many Jews had come to comfort Martha and Mary after their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary remained in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask God, God will give you. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Martha replied, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though they die. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She replied, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, God's son, the one who is coming into the world. After she said this, she went and spoke privately to her sister Mary. The teacher is here and he's calling for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to Jesus. He hadn't entered the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were comforting Mary in the house saw her get up and quickly leave, they followed her. They assumed she was going to mourn at the tomb. When Mary arrived where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying also, he was deeply disturbed and troubled. He asked, where have you laid him? They replied, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to cry. The Jews said, see how much he loved him? But some of them said, he healed the eyes of the man born blind. 
Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was deeply disturbed again when he came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was covered, covering the entrance. Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha and her sister, the sister of the dead man said, Lord, the smell will be awful. He's been dead for four days. Jesus replied, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see God's glory? So they removed the stone. Jesus looked up and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. I know you always hear me. I say this for the benefit of the crowd standing here so that they will believe that you sent me. Having said this, Jesus shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his feet bound and his hands tied and his face covered with a cloth. Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who came with Mary and saw what Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that was a long story, um, but it's one of my favorites. And I love it because it says a lot of things about the character of God and who Jesus is in our lives. Uh, not only did Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, something that probably a lot of people thought wasn't possible, um, but he showed that God has a purpose, even in times that are difficult, even in situations that we feel are unfair or final. Um, God's glory can shine through any of those situations. I also love that Jesus comes to his friends, Mary and Martha, and Lazarus was his friend too. And even though Jesus knows what his purpose is and what he's capable of and what God is capable of, um, Jesus still mourns with them because it hurts him to see his friends hurting. And um, it, I just find it comforting to know that Jesus cares for each of us in that way. And when we're hurting, Jesus is hurting as well. So um, that was my scripture for today. And now I'm going to share with you uh, two different poems, both by the same poet. Her name is Donna Ashworth, and this is someone that I hadn't heard of before the other day, but somebody shared this poem on Facebook, and I really enjoyed it, so I'm going to share it with you. And this relates specifically to our current times and what's going on in the world. This one is called History Will Remember When the World Stopped. History will remember when the world stopped, and the flight stayed on the ground, and the cars parked in the street, and the trains didn't run. History will remember when the schools closed and the children stayed indoors, and the medical staff walked towards the fire and they didn't run. History will remember when the people sang on their balconies in isolation, but so very much together in courage and song. History will remember when the people fought for their old and their weak, protected the vulnerable by doing nothing at all. History will remember when the virus left and the houses opened and the people came out and hugged and kissed and started again, kinder than before. So that was the first poem. And then the second poem is also by Donna Ashworth. And this one is just titled, When This Is Over. When this is over, and it will be over, social hierarchy will shift. The bankers will be less, the people who delivered the bread will be more. The workers who stepped up so we could step down will be forever remembered and revered. The kids who didn't graduate or pass a single exam will be the generation who stayed home to save lives. The child of a single mother who, is who isolated to save We'll never forget someone dropped milk outside the door and a cookie to bring cheer. He will grow up kind and grateful. The child who still went to school so her parents could care at the front line will look back with pride. She will grow up brave and courageous. When this is over, and it will be over, the world will be different. The next generation will be mindful that touch is a blessed thing. Life is a blessed thing. So those are my two poems that I wanted to share with you today. Um, obviously, they directly 
relate to what we're all going through right now. Um, but I think that they're a really nice reminder that while it might be difficult to do what we're doing right now, the payoff will be worth it. And uh, hopefully we'll all be changed a little bit by what we've experienced in this time. So as always, if you have any particular prayer concerns or requests for me, feel free to leave them in a comment or reach out to me via text or email. Um, I am here, I'm hanging out. Uh, I wanted to share with everybody that my mom sent me a care package uh, from Kansas and I received it today and this painting, oh, nope, wrong side. Where is it? That painting that's back there, she did that. Um, she's really into paint by numbers and she's very good at them. So I was excited to receive that. And she also sent me the um, awesome gift of three or four rolls of toilet paper. So that's really exciting. Um, I was getting pretty low. So thank you, mom, for that. I appreciate it. Uh, and if you all wanna share anything that's been bringing you joy today or over the weekend, um, something that's lifted your spirits or something that you're hopeful about, that would be awesome to see in the comments too. So. Thank you for joining us. Um, we will be back here again at eight o'clock this evening for evening prayer. And I look forward to being with you all again. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.